Hey guys, DJ Slope here from Slope's Game Room, and in my hand I have eight Intellivision Amico video games. I hold the entire library of Amico video games in my hand, and it's for a console that isn't out yet. It's a crazy time we live in. Now, I've obviously got these uh, from Tommy. I reached out to him personally and asked if I could do an unboxing of these things, and he said yes. Now I will say straight off the bat, that I'm not getting paid. We never actually spoke, me and Tommy, before uh, um, I reached out to him. He didn't reach out to me. And uh, yeah, he was kind enough to send this over, so thank you very much, Tommy. And um, yeah, I've obviously done this because, you know, YouTube algorithmic reasons. I wanted to be one of the first to open it, but obviously I'm far from the first. However, I'm gonna come at it from a very different angle. And, uh, well, whilst I unbox these things, I will explain that right now. So here we go. Let's do this thing. As stated, I want to do things a little bit different here today. I don't want to just unbox this. I want to not only show you guys in the best possible quality I can what you're going to be getting in this box, what the uh, lenticular cards look like, what the coins look like, all that sort of thing. But also, I want to get the opinions from plenty of other UK YouTubers who you're going to be hearing from in this very video, all of which you should subscribe to, by the way, if you're not already. Links will be down in the description, so go and check them out. You've got massive YouTubers here, you've got smaller YouTubers, you've got people here that are very big collectors of video games, you've got some people in here that are actually game developers. So you've got a good range of people here that will give their opinions from a UK standpoint. The reason I've only reached out to UK YouTubers is because, one, we don't really talk about the Amico too much over here. One of the reasons might be because Intellivision is a very unknown name here in the UK. I mean, sure, we know what obviously Sega and Nintendo are and Atari, but you're sooner going to find someone that knows what Sinclair is, Amstrad, Amiga, all those sort of things over anything in television. I actually had to check to make sure it was actually released here in the UK because it dawned on me I've never ever seen an Intellivision in the wild besides going to gaming shows. On top of that, what you're seeing in these boxes is a new type of game media. These are not physical cartridges or hue cards or CDs, whatever, that you can put into a system and it loads off of those cartridges or CDs. These are RFID cards that you tap on top of your console and it downloads the game. No different than if you went to a game shop and got a code on the back of a Ori in the Blind Forest or a Cuphead game and take that home, type in the code and download the game. These obviously download automatically when you tap them but also when you take them to somebody else's house you can tap that same card onto their amico it will come off your original amico and then go onto your friend's amico so you can lend people your games you can essentially sell your games as well the whole thing is completely new it's a new way of doing digital games and because of that i feel like it's important to get the opinion of the uk youtuber crowd and again you should subscribe to all of these individuals <laughs> who have also not been sponsored by Intellivision to talk about these things. These are 100% honest opinions. None of this has been shown to anybody in television before you guys are seeing it right now. And hopefully what you're about to hear will not only give you guys a good opinion on where we stand, but will also give Intellivision some insight into some of the challenges they may face with this new type of game media and how the UK feels about it. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So, the Amico physical announcement. Yeah, I knew we were going to be in for an interesting time with the very carefully worded start where they're showing you their physical products and they make a big point of saying physical products and not saying games at any stage. So, what you're getting is a quite a nicely designed box. Inside said box is some sort of lenticular art card and a coin, you know, all the little bonuses that you might get with some sort of semi-limited edition video game. But, of course, not really a game as such. You've got your RFI. ID card there, which has probably got like a 12 digit code on or something, stick it on your Amico and it's the same as if you had typed a code in, basically. And there you go. Done. Um, the design of the cards is interesting and in they are designed to look like an old Intellivision cartridge, but of course the problem with Intellivision cartridges were no artwork on them. You know, they're a very sort of plain slab with a bit of writing on, but uh, I, I mean I understand it. It makes sense, I suppose, we want to keep in with the Intellivision thing. But yeah, um, your problem is, as soon as you have read your RFID card, 
that's it. There is no connection to a video game for that package ever again. You know, the card has been used and it's gone because it's a use once thing. But of course, it will now be on the blockchain because it's also an NFT or something. Oh, this really does sound like throw all the buzzwords that are popular at the moment. I mean, is this actually a good idea? Um, I mean, I understand it from the point of view of, hey, maybe you can transfer a license from one machine to another because it exists separately on a blockchain. Like, yeah, but there's easier ways of doing that than getting into the whole NFT thing, isn't there? I don't... It's, it's very troubling that. I mean, you know, it'll be registered on the blockchain. Which blockchain? That's like saying, oh, I'd like to order this set of DVDs, please. Certainly. What's your address? I live in the house. You know, you, you've got to be a bit more specific than just the blockchain. Which bloody blockchain? There's a lot of these things around and they work differently and stuff, you know. It's all, um, yeah, I'm not entirely convinced by that, shall we say. That also, buzzword usage in the video is pretty bad. When it first starts off, they point out that the packaging is 100% recyclable. Yeah, I mean, that's generally a good thing, but... Is that what you want to be saying for your limited edition collectible? Hey, and if you chuck it in the bin, don't worry, it won't mess the environment up too much. You know? <laughs> just, it's like a list of cool things they just want to read off, do you know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah, mm. And But the ultimate problem, of course, is you don't see it working. You don't see anyone tap that RFID card or anything. And you can buy them now, and the Amico's not finished, you know? <laughs> Um, are you going to end up with what is literally just a box? I mean, it's going to be just a box once you've used the code in it anyway, and you could argue it's just a box beforehand, I suppose, but you, you're kind of buying the idea of playing a game one day? Uh, I don't know, it just seems... I mean, I understand they probably want more money at the moment, but is this money going to go into actually finishing the machine? Have they? What is happening with their finances? We've got no idea, but the whole thing is... Yeah, slightly troubling with all the delays, um, all this blockchain stuff now being thrown around as if it means something. Well, yeah, this will be an interesting one to pick apart after the actual Amico console is launched, whenever that may be. So, some very positive news in the world of the Intellivision Amico, insofar as they're actually starting to ship some physical product. Uh, I think it's fair to say that this project has had uh, more than its fair share of delays and setbacks over the past few years, but uh, hopefully this is a sign that they're starting to turn a corner. And I love the design of these boxes. Um, I think they're very authentic to the original designs, and I think they're very retro. Um, so yeah, points there, thumbs up to them. Um, obviously put some thought and uh, some care into these so uh, that's great to see, and I think they'll look really nice up on the shelf uh, in amongst your uh, retro games, uh, as far as collectors are concerned. And it's certainly collectors that they're aiming for uh, with these, I think, um, with the stuff that they're including in the boxes, or the, uh, the feelies, as we used to call them back in the day. Uh, so we've got that uh, collectible coin. Uh, for some reason, they reminded me of the uh, Atari Lynx pin badges that we used to get uh, in the in the Lynx game boxes back in the day. I don't know if you remember those. Um, and the lenticular card, which uh, was very uh, nostalgic for me. I think uh, anyone of a certain age will remember those being all the rage on the playground uh, back in the kind of late 80s early 90s uh, so uh, yeah it's a very inspired choice of uh, collectible there um as far as the actual uh, game itself is concerned, the cartridge or the card or whatever you want to call it, um, RFID, NFT, blockchain technology being used there, that I'm not entirely convinced about. Um, we have seen some quite dubious applications of NFTs and blockchain technology lately. Uh, hopefully this isn't one of them. Um, the theory is certainly sound in uh, tracking ownership and stuff, and I guess that's uh, they see that as an anti-piracy measure and, and all that. So. Um, Hopefully that uh, requirement to activate the game uh, initially isn't uh, too much of an issue for people. Um, I was certainly hoping that this would be entirely offline, uh, like those retro systems and like the Evercade. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess that remains to be seen. So cautiously optimistic, but uh, it's great to see, uh, as I initially said, uh, it's great to see them finally starting to ship something. And uh, hopefully this is a sign that the project is uh, starting to turn a corner. So I should preface this by saying that I am not a collectible kind of guy. So when I look at these things in terms of value, that's where I'm coming from as a gamer. Um, I have to say, I don't really understand this product. As far as I can tell, the idea is that it's nice to have this like glorious physical copy 
and they've done a very very nice job of making it appear as if it's this traditional version of these sort of you know cartridges but there, then there's also this this nft thing attached to it which frankly doesn't make any sense to me because we're looking at this and we're going wow it's amazing that this card is it looks just like the old one except this one i have to register it online so then it begs the question what is the point of the physical card because i could just register online why, why do i need that if it's from a anti-piracy point of view then surely the physical card is enough in fact that's a, a problem with modern games is that you have no physical copy so we have all of these anti-piracy measures you know drm and this sort of stuff it's bizarre it's like it's like me selling you a super nintendo cartridge and saying oh yep so plug it into your nintendo then register it online otherwise you how do we know you have it what, what, what do you mean i'm holding it from from my point of view this looks like a fad stacked on top of a fad perhaps that's an ig ignorant opinion i'm just looking at the i'm just looking at the price here we're talking for the full bundle 150 euros now eight games for 150 euros maybe you would think well that's okay but this doesn't come with the console uh, and as far as I can tell, these are almost exclusively just remasters of classic, like Amiga games and stuff. So I don't... Am I paying for the coin? Am I paying for the NFT? Where, <laughs> where's the value? It, this is it, it's, a, it's a collector's bag. But of a thing that I don't no will necessarily have a huge amount of collectible value outside of the sentimental aspect of it especially with the nft what even what even is that you know what were they in the first place people still make those what's going on i guess in summary what i'm asking is why would i spend all of this money on this instead of just seeking out the original if I really wanted the collection because this isn't rare because well all oh, these things are so old that they they're difficult to find now because people didn't realize how popular they would be so loads of them got destroyed or they were mistreated whatever they just you know they're just stuck in somebody's attic somewhere so they're hard to find but this is only collectible because they are producing a limited run of them rather than the, them being these um like ancient ancient video game relics that must be preserved i think the idea of some sort of physical media for a project like the amico is pretty cool but it's kind of a real shame that we're dealing with something like nfts with how ownership will work because I understand the complaints with digital products, I have all the same complaints myself, you know, uh, the, the inability to sell your games off or trade them with friends and that sort of stuff. But making your ownership become part of the blockchain is just really shallow thinking, in, in my eyes at least. It just isn't necessary when you're talking about giving a, a physical item. I thought the sort of whole point of a digital license is that it's tied to you without a physical key, which can then reduce costs, uh, get rid of the, you know, the ability to lose it as such, there's no wastage. Uh, but to, to give a physical key and use the blockchain with all of the many complaints that come with that just seems like a double barrel blast of impracticality that ultimately makes the consumer the loser. Uh, it isn't as though their way of registering ownership wouldn't work being off of the blockchain. You know, the, the sort of DRM rights they seem to be using can be tied to an account and control on their own servers instead. So in that sense, like, any digital marketplace could open people to trade access to their games as well, but it diminishes the revenue that development companies can make, which obviously isn't great. But to give both, like, a, a physical key and a digital cutoff seems like it only really suits the publishing company. I think it would be better if they just kind of worked out some form of DRM that they could use with the machine and provide the game in a physical media and provide updates or whatever through a digital marketplace system uh, 
as it stands, it just kind of kind of seems a bit pointless. Um, I get like limited edition extra little bits that you can display on your shelf or whatever. That's cool. But like just sell that separately, you know, um, it doesn't you don't need to scan a key to, to download a thing. And then when you want to trade it with someone, you've got to trade the key and transfer the, the digital element. And, you know, it just seems convoluted for the sake of trying to seem up to date with technology when actually the complaints of that technology are rampant and continue to, to like people keep finding more and more reasons to, to have an issue with NFTs and, and the blockchain. So I don't know if you're talking about a classic video game system, keep it classic, you know, physical media. If you're going to do physical media, put the game on the physical media or at least kind of give it a point because at the moment it just seems like a piece of plastic that isn't really needed. So these are Miko boxed editions. They're what? They're just a bit of cardboard that if the SNES has shown us will probably won't last very long, particularly if they're touting the whole sort of biodegradable. So it's no one's going to have this in like five years time. And inside that cardboard box is what? A little bit of card that gives you some limited instructions. Woo! And a coin that just sort of reeks of those coins that you get at amusements and attractions. But the meat of it is that bit of cardboard that I'm guessing has an NFC chip inside, similar to an amiibo. And all that's really stored on it is a unique ID. But they're a special unique ID. Because it's blockchain. And it's those non-fungible tokens. Which is complete and utter biz talk. It's just marketing speak. Because at the end of the day, they're just going to record it on their server. The same one that you'll download or purchase the game from because you still have to download the game. So that whole sort of, oh, you can trade games by just handing it over. Well, they could have just done that with a simple web UI on the console. They just type in their friend's name and whoosh, it would go over to them. It just reeks of marketing speak. And the fact that they're selling these before the consoles are even on the shelves, before there's a launch date for the consoles. It, this, sort of reeks of desperation and trying to get extra money into the company. So yeah, I, 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 I'm obviously very positive for it. And now it's time for my view on all of this. And uh, yeah, it's my video, so I'm going to give myself a little bit more time. <laughs> so yeah, these things, they're obviously not for everyone. I personally would have preferred a cartridge or a CD or whatever. And, you know, that's why I have things like the physical PlayStation 5 rather than the digital one. Um, but the reason those digital systems exist is because people out there go and buy them. I know people in the real world who have Nintendo Switches and don't own one single physical game for it because they've gone completely digital. And the same goes for people that have either or the Xbox Series S or X because of of things like the Game Pass. I don't think a completely digital only world is going to be with us even in the next generation, but at the very least, I do see a future that embraces digital only more and more as time goes on because we are kind of living in it already. But considering this is a system that is catered towards retro gamers of the Intellivision name and I suppose more for us Brits, people of the Mega Drive Genesis era that remember the shiny days, I can't deny that I am sad to see that this isn't a physical game that I can put into a physical hole on my system. But at the same time, I do see it as a possibly a positive step in the right direction being able to tap your game download it take it to your friends do the same and then bring it back to your house and tap it back on yours it removes it on theirs yes it's obviously still a download and not a physical game but how is that not better than a digital only system that locks games to your system want to download all your games digitally and lock them onto your system the same way you do with um steam a digital playstation 5 or an xbox series s then of course you can or you can pay a little bit more and get this as a kind of backup option 
Plus, for all of you guys out there like me that still purchase physical PlayStation 5 or uh, Switch games, for example, having to wait until the game is copied onto your system for the PlayStation 5 or even having to download an update from the very first day the game's released is something that we all have to deal with with almost every major release. If I lend my mate an Amico game to use on his Amico, he's going to have to tap it on his console and download it. If I lend my mate um, Far Cry 6, for instance, he's going to have to insert it and then wait for it to copy onto the system and then download an update before he can use the game to its full potential. And no, before you all start running to the comments, I'm obviously not comparing Far Cry 6 to um, Brain Jewel. I'm just trying to make a point. Would I have preferred a world where a console whose main target audience are retro gamers to actually have physical cards, uh, discs or hue cards or whatever? Sure. Absolutely, guaranteed, definitely, and sadly, I do feel like we've been led up the garden path a little bit here, expecting physical media, and honestly, in television should have at least been a bit more honest or at least clearer about this from an earlier date. But do I prefer having this as a backup option on a digital-only console? Yes, I do. And as much as I quite like the presentation on the boxes themselves, beside a few personal differences that I would have made myself, primarily the inclusion of a manual. Yes, these are basic games that don't need manuals, but again, your target audience with these are people that pay over the odds for physical cartridges of digital only games from limited run type companies. And they always have manuals in those, or at the very least some kind of art mini concept book. And to be honest, you're in television, for God's sake. Surely you could have put some mini history factoid about the earlier games in whatever IP it is to show off how rich in television's history is. But whatever. I like the box for the most part. It's going to look good on gamers' shelves alongside other console collections. The coin, I personally think they missed a bit of a trick here with that. If the console had a little opening for you to slot the coin in or a little circle area for you to place it on and use that as the RFID download, then I think that would have actually been quite cool. I mean, it's far from the solution, but come on. Again, look at your target audience. At the end of the day, who knows how well this is all going to work. I don't think it's going to be causing any major privacy issues personally. I mean, honestly, I'm far from any kind of expert in the world of NFT type things. And yes, even though I would have preferred an actual game to put in an actual slot, this new path is super intriguing to me. And I like the fact that its testbed is on a pretty controversial and very interesting console release. It gets me excited and I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this whole thing rolls out. Okay, so my first thought is he mentions it's recyclable. I don't see the point in that. Why am I going to be purchasing a collectible to take it apart and recycle it? That doesn't make any sense at all to me in the slightest. Um, the second thing he mentions is um, about the 3D holographic card. I liked that. I thought it was all right. It's quite cool. Um, or at least the images of it on the computer, which were obviously computerized and not real. Um, that was that was all right. I thought it was okay. Um, if that's what it's like, if it if I bought it, then fine, I guess. Again, the coin the coin seemed all right to me. I just I'm failing to see the point of this really. Um, again, the NFT. Why? Why do I need a little bit of plastic that doesn't actually have anything on it except for essentially a download code that I can go, oh, thanks. So, yeah, I'll use this download. Oh, I don't really want it. Do you want it? You can have it on your, you can have it on your Amico if you've got one. Oh, all right. Okay, fine. You have it. Like, apart from the fact that you can share it, what's the point? Don't get it. Um, and then the presentation itself. Okay, it's fine. Um... It just feels more like a hard sell to me and I it might be because I'm English and it, it it just doesn't do anything for me I don't like a hard sell I don't like the way he was trying to make out like there's gonna be so much scarcity there's gonna be so many people buying it it felt like to me like a QVC advert or some other kind of television sales um, shopping channel type presentation it wasn't really actually selling to me why I would really want it, apart from the fact that he's only making 50,000 of each of those and they're specifically going to have limited edition written on the top. Apart from that, what's the point?
I don't know, I think this is kind of that stupid middle ground of when you buy a code in box. Like, what's the point in having a box if it's just a code? I don't get those, but some people like to collect them. And this is kind of the same thing, like, you're getting an RFID card. Is it really a game? Not really. You're just basically just downloading the thing onto your, onto your console. They say you don't even need the card after the first time, so that is definitely the case. Although, I suppose it's good that you can transfer the games over to other people. But still, like, is there any point in having a box of physical media and it's just feeding that thing that people have that need to have something physical just seems a bit unnecessary really i think the overall presentation is really good though um it looks great it looks a bit kiddie like sort of toy ish but i think it looks really nice and uh, i like the coin that's cool for collectors and everything i'm not sure how to feel about these when it comes to physical games for the amico i feel like tommy and the folks at into the vision are in between a rock and a hard place the Rock being retro gamers, uh, while they are the marks for a physical media format, I feel that the console was initially marketed as something that wasn't necessarily for them. And the hard place is the intended market, families that would love what Tommy and co have to offer but would not necessarily look to Intellivision for. They might not get the importance of physical games, what with the kids being brought up on mobile gaming these days. Now, that's not to say that these are a bad idea, there is something inherently important about physical media and the concept of ownership goes way beyond having something nice to look at on a shelf. And the idea of the games being an NFC tag and by extension attached to the blockchain is an intriguing idea and I am curious to see how this all pans out. Um, I, after all, I hope that the Amico is in some way successful, but I am also concerned about the ecological implications of tying physical games to something that is considered environmentally destructive, especially when the target market may struggle to understand or appreciate what they've bought into. It kind of seems like one step away from one of those controversy headlines saying, throwback console destroys planet. But then again, I get the impression that these were never designed for store shelves. I feel like these were designed to appease retro gamers in some way. And whether or not uh, the way that Intellivision have done this is the right way to do so will remain to be seen. But either way, I do wish the team at Intellivision the best of luck. So, um, I think the last time I felt this confused was when I was 16. I love that they've gone to all of this effort creating a physical version of the game. You know, the packaging is a nice throwback to my childhood. It's got the flip top box. There's the lenticular cards replacing the overlays you used to get in the box. The RFID card kind of looks like a squashed version of the original cart. All of this, I think, is absolutely awesome fan service. Personally, I'm not too bothered about the coin, but, you know, I appreciate the sentiment there. On the other hand, it's an RF card. I feel like we're getting all the special edition goodies of a game without actually getting the game. And maybe that's being a bit unfair, I'm not sure what I was expecting them to do, but the RF card, the RF card just isn't really getting me excited. I feel like we could see Amico RF gift cards at your local Sainsbury's store. Overall, I think it's great to see them going to these lengths for their fans, I'm just not as excited as I thought I would be. Um, well I don't totally hate it. The box itself reminds me of like premium cassette based games back in the day. You might have got a clamshell game for the Commodore 64 or the ZX Spectrum or something like that. So that has a nice retro vibe to it. But yeah, what's inside? Does anyone want that coin? Does anyone really want that coin? Uh, and then you've got a collector's card with an RFID tag in there. Uh, you might as well have put it in the coin, hadn't you? You have a coin slot that you put the coin into the console to, to load the game. But all the RFID tag is, is a link to a download to grab it off of the internet. I don't totally hate it, but it's more the kind of thing I'd probably expect on a mini console. You know, buy a collector's card for a Mega Drive game, swipe it over the console, download the game. But with a full price console, I think I probably just feel a bit shortchanged by the whole method that they've used. And it feels just like another company that's trying to shoehorn blockchain and NFTs and things like that into their business plan. And it doesn't interest me. I just want to play games. Can we just have cartridges? Is there anything wrong with that? So what did I think of this so-called physical Amico media? 
Well, as for the boxes themselves, I thought they was rather pretty and rather authentic to the source material. They reminded me a lot of the Intellivision games I have amongst my personal collection. I have about 30 of them sitting on the shelving behind me. Um, the holographic cards were pretty nice too, as was the coin. Did not have a problem with that either. However, what I will say is I am not a fan of the concepts of NFTs in general. Um, I find the concept of owning digital assets to be somewhat of a scam and a way to get additional money out of people who have more of it than they actually have sense. Um, hence why there's NFTs online going for millions at present because a lot of people just do not know what to do with their money and unfortunately I'm not one of those people who are wealthy enough to waste money on such useless tact. Um, as for the presentation itself, I didn't like that there was such a uh, high emphasis on the fact that there's going to be 50,000 um, copies of these things made with the word limited on the front. I just don't like the concept of creating artificial scarcity when it comes to any product. Collectibles should become collectibles organically over time, not because they are made to be collectibles. So that's what I do not like about the product really. It seems like it's being manufactured. You've got to buy this because it's going to be a collectible and it's going to be worth more money one day. So I'm going to say, um, as Simon Cow would bring to the table, it's a no from me. And there you have it, guys. Thank you all so much if you've made it this far into the video. And thank you to everyone that provided their uh, opinions for this video. As stated earlier on, you're going to be able to subscribe to all of those awesome channels down in the description. I highly suggest you do as well. Um, yeah, so this is all... Uh, it's still so new. It's a really exciting um, uh, 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 medium that's coming out here uh you know there's some good there's some bad you know you've had some uh negative opinions here you've had some positive opinions and i feel like you know it's they're all honest opinions and that's the most important thing it's a great way uh for for the people out in television to look at this and see okay so this is what you know some of the uk market are, are thinking regarding the amico people that don't tend to talk about it as much as some of the american youtubers um yeah it's it, it's it's interesting it's interesting i am excited uh for when the amico does get released that system genuinely does look right up my street i'm actually very excited for it and although i definitely definitely would prefer physical media there's absolutely no doubt about that i would love to put a cartridge into this system um i do see these as uh, a step up from a digital only world like if, if if we were going into a digital only world these would be uh, a, a great alternative you know digital games and this so yeah it's uh it's a step up for digital if, if it works the way it's being you know shown off uh, and and, I, and i'm excited to see how it all works out so um yeah i mean and also i'm recording this part of the video now after i've received the cartridges when i've done my uh, opinion earlier on that's before i received them and i will say that they are genuinely really nice to hold you know that they, they, they don't feel cheap at all the the coins got a good weight to them um obviously there are still things that i personally would have done different i would have liked there to be some kind of manual um i, I wish the actual rfid card had a bit more art on it but i understand why they've gone the way they have um, they look good on the shelf <laughs> so yeah i mean i can't complain there they, they genuinely do look good and they're they're, they're they're nice to hold and um yeah that new game smell <laughs> now what i can tell you guys is um even though me and tommy and and people at intellivision never ever spoke before i asked him to send me these games he has actually agreed to an interview so there's a lot of uh important uh, questions that have come up in this particular video and I, I i actually ask you guys to leave an opinion down below as well please do let me know what what are the hard-hitting questions that you want to ask tommy Talarico? because uh hey an interview's coming we're gonna do we're actually gonna do two interviews actually one talking about the good old days of you know the old earthworm gym days global gladiators aladdin all that stuff um but then a second interview as well talking about nothing but the amico and i want to ask him the questions that you guys put forward so please down below let me know 
what you think of this. Do you have concerns? Write them down below and I will ask them when I interview him, um, unless th this video gets thousands and thousands of comments, which I doubt it will. <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm actually quite excited for everything uh, regarding this. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see what you guys think as well down below. And uh, like I said, I will be asking Tommy your questions. Um, completely uncut and it's coming soon so please do hit that subscribe button and thank you guys for checking out the video this is dj slope signing out and hopefully i'll see you all next time bye bye